It gives me a great joy to come before you and speak the word of God at this time. I would like to share from John chapter 13 verses from 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you. My dear friends, when I read this particular verse, the Holy Spirit was talking to me very specially that I would like to share with you. Jesus invited his disciples to the upper room to have the supper with them. And when he was sitting with them, when he had this holy communion with them, Jesus suddenly gave a new commandment. Remember that all the people that were surrounded with Jesus Christ were Jewish people. Jewish people remember always Torah, where Moses brought the Ten Commandments from the presence of God. God wrote them with his own hands. And remember suddenly Jesus giving a new commandment and that commandment is telling that that as a human being you need to remember something. And now Jesus is a human and he is giving a commandment that would have brought a confusion among the disciples. How can a man give a commandment? And when there are ten commandments which God has given and Jesus is saying he gives one commandment. How simple it is. Remember, every country has their own constitution, their own rules and regulations. India has uh, their own, our own constitution and our own laws. And remember that every law or the constitution that follows, every country has it in a different ways. Whatever is in US doesn't have to be in India. Whatever is in India doesn't have to be followed by Australians. Every country has their own laws and constitution, my dear friends. Now Jesus Christ is, now Jesus is, is making this Ten Commandments more smaller, more smaller. And he's saying, love one another. That is so important. He says that I give a new commandment. A new commandment has been given to the people of God that you need to love one another. Bible says that God is love. When you love one another, you are presenting God in between them. When there is love, you can enjoy the presence of God. When there is hatredness, bitterness, anger and all other things that is, comes from the enemy, that comes from the Satan. He always comes to steal and to destroy. But Jesus is not like that. He came to demonstrate how the life is and how we need to live, how we need to plan, how we need to live a better life than what we are living today. That is the love of God, my dear friends. No one would have ever thought about this new commandment. Jesus said, love yourself and love your enemies or love your neighbors. First, you need to love yourself. When you love yourself, then you can love other people. When you don't love yourself, you cannot love others. Many times they think that you will be pouring out love, pouring out love, pouring out love. And finally what happens is that you don't have love finally. When there is no love for yourself, when you hate yourself, when you don't see yourself with the value, then immediately what happens is that whatever the love that you show with other people, that also doesn't have value, my dear friends. You need to love yourself. As I have been traveling around India and around the world for several years, and I talk to people, I like to talk to people and know their heart, know their plans, know their, what they're doing, how they're dealing things. That gives more wisdom and knowledge. When I talk to people, especially they say that um, they come from this background and they do this, these are the problems that they have, these are the challenges that they're going through and how they tackle. All this information gives a lot of knowledge and especially when I ask them how much do you love yourself they say that my nose is not good my eyes is not good I'm very fat I'm very skinny I don't look good some people say I'm dark some people say I'm brown some people say they are white especially when you come to India uh, it's a different rather than America and other countries they differentiate as white and black people or they will look as the rich and the poor. But in India, there are different casteism. 
the people are divided into different casteism the higher caste lower caste and below lower caste so such a uh, administration has been done many years back and still people follow that even though they might be living in america or even they might be living in even the spaceship when you find an indian obviously they have a name a name that carries the caste and most of them they have that feeling they like to move with those caste people they want to talk to them they want to have party with them they want to have a church with their own surnames they want to have the church with their own caste there are churches in india where a higher caste pastor will be there and he doesn't love a lower caste people he doesn't encourage them he doesn't some churches they don't even ask them to come into the church but when they come to the church they need to sit away from the people I have seen such kind of churches the church need to take that responsibility to love one another when you are able to love one another you are the disciple of god bible says in uh, john chapter 13 verses 35 it says that when you love one another the world will know that you are a disciple the world will know that you are a follower of jesus christ the world will know that you are the child of god when you are not able to love one another that means you are not following the desire you are not following the footprints of lord jesus christ it is different to preach and it's different to practice as a servant of god it's easy to preach give big big statements big big uh, words big big statements it's very good to preach when it comes to apply it is very tough my dear friend i'm openly talking to you it's very tough preaching for 1 hour 2 hours 10 hours i'm ready to preach but how much i'm practicing is important not how much i give stuff or how much i have or known the dictionary words how i can construct the statements how can i construct the beautiful creative uh, backgrounds and stuff and all this is good but more than that a life will speak more than our sermons a life should be an exemplary things to the world not just preaching anybody can preach even the satan is preaching in this world satan is preaching in different capacities but what the children of god we are doing are we practicing to love one another or you are differentiating yourself saying that they are black or these are white people or there are certain caste people these are low caste or high caste or these are rich people and the the poor people they have a very good profile they don't have a bad profile this pastor has a big profile so we need to give him a big place or oh, this pastor has a very little flock so you need to give him a small place how can you differentiate does jesus differentiate like that does he show such kind of partialities Jesus showed equality when the disciples of Jesus they came to him and asked him Jesus when your kingdom comes how it will be like where you will where will we we be seated do we have any special chairs in heaven please let us know Jesus said first will become last and last will become first when you become like a child then only you can enter into the kingdom of god the children they have a nature they don't see as difference you know unless the parents you know the parents are the main people who implement all these things when a baby is born baby doesn't know what religion the baby is baby doesn't know what language baby doesn't know whether it's black or white or which color baby doesn't know whether uh, the baby is rich or poor baby doesn't know about their background everything comes together by teaching the child telling the child you are this they are this you are you need to be like this you need to keep them there because they are born like this the fundamentally the foundation need to be corrected my dear friends this need to be corrected from the childhood it's not be corrected when you grow old it's not to be corrected somewhere after having a long journey of life all this unity and oneness need to happen from the childhood you need to teach your children that all are equal all are equal we all are equal in the sight of god 
there is no great nor less they might be rich people or poor people they might be educated or uneducated they might be jewish people they might be greek people they might be a gentiles whatever the 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 country or whatever the language that might they might speak we need to see with the love of god as i am traveling around the world preaching the gospel god told me to travel and uh, i started traveling to different countries i hear people talking like this they say that why do you want to travel you come from a poor country you could live with among the poor people the poor people in the entire world why do you want to spend all this money traveling why can't you spend all that money for the people around you why do you want to come and speak to us why do you want to come and preach the word to us you know it is very sad jesus told us to travel to the ends of the world that is the great commission that jesus has given jesus said poor are always there see the differentiation how they see you come from a poor country so you need to stay in certain level you cannot increase your profile you cannot travel like this because you come from this background you are like this your background is like this or your your people around the, your your country or the people around in your town or people around in your village they are like this so you need to limit yourself you or your you have a limit when i heard these words i cried like anything God you told me to travel and why are these people talking like this why are they 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 are differentiating me they are traveling they are going on holidays they are doing everything they have money they are doing but i don't have money but whatever i am having i want to sow in other countries because that is what your dream is you need to go to the end of the world you told me and i'm traveling and why all these words lord do you really want me to travel you really want me to do all this when i travel to other countries i never call anybody and ask me to give me a flight ticket i never ask anybody to provide me a meal i never ask anybody to open their doors i pray to god i share my heart with people and they warmly welcome me there are so many precious people who warmly welcome me i never stretch my hand with anybody i pray and i ask god god is the one who opens the door revelation chapter 3 verse 7 it says that unless god opens a door nobody can close it when god closes a door nobody can open it that's the power of god i don't depend on people i don't depend on the the world i don't depend on the bank i don't depend on my salaries i don't depend on any other things i depend on god god told me to go to japan i didn't have anybody there when god told me to go to japan i saved little money i booked a flight ticket i booked a hotel and i was praying god where do you want me to go i booked everything i'm ready but god told me to go to this particular city and he told me to visit a person talk to a person when i talked to him he opens the door and he said that there was a, a angel that came into my dream in the last night and said that a dark tall pastor is coming you receive him that is a confirmation when god has spoken something that is the confirmation when i went there they didn't look at me as a dark man they didn't look at me from india they didn't look at me i'm something else they looked at me as a child of god a servant of god and they honored me they gave me a very special care remember my friends how the church today is are you still differentiating one another or you are showing the true love of god through your actions through your word through your behavior you need to train your children from childhood and say that all are equal all are equal the church need to be open to everybody the church need to be open to all colors all religions all kind of sinners all kind of languages all kind of nations the church need to be opened church need to have open doors church cannot have a restriction that 
certain people need to sit there, certain people need to sit out. No. We all are equal in the sight of God. When God has called us, He called us as the children of God. We all carry the bloodline of Lord Jesus Christ. Through the bloodline of Lord Jesus Christ, we all have become the children of God, of Most High God. We all are children of God. Whoever been confessed, whoever confessed their sins, and whoever has received the forgiveness from God, they become the children of God. When you are a child of God, you need to remember that you are very precious. You cannot differentiate one another. Everybody is created into different ways. When you see my my hand, see you can see the uh, fingerprints of my hand. This is very unique. Nobody in this universe has a footprints like me. I carry this unique identity which God has given me. You know the eyes? This eyes is very unique. I carry an identity with my eyes. When you see my ears, this ears has a unique design. This design, God designed it for me. My face, my hands, my legs, especially my DNA. Especially my DNA. This DNA has so much unique things in it. It has information from Adam till today. The gene, the chromosomes have a unique identity. When you open it, it will talk about where I came from, how I am, what are the natures that I have built. All the information is stored in the DNA. My father was uh, working in a, as a clerk. My grandfather was working in a, in a gold mines. My great-grandfather was an agriculturer. And the, before that, you know, my great-grandfather had a cycle. My grandfather had a cycle. My father has a bike. God gave me a car. There are different ways that God developed. Different ways that God has been putting things together. Whatever you have the knowledge, your children will gain the same knowledge. Whatever you gained when the children have born, when your children are born, whatever the, the information that you have stored in your DNA will be transferred to your children. From there they grow. From the day they are born, from there they start growing and learning exactly what you are doing. Exactly what you are doing. A transformation will happen when you change and when your children are changed. When the children are educated to seek equally, to love one another. My dear friends, this needs to be addressed all over the world. We cannot differentiate. When I um, knock the doors in some countries that God has asked me to come, hey, don't open the door because I'm an Indian. They don't open the door because I'm a dark man. They don't do open the door because I don't have money. This is not the nature of God. It is his reality. God is speaking to you at this time, my friends. We need to show the compassionate love of God. When Jesus saw the people coming to him, he moved with compassion. He, we, he moved with love. He said that they are the sheep that doesn't have a shepherd. And when you have a shepherd, but still you live like as if you don't have a shepherd. My dear friends, our way of thinking should change. Our way of talking should change. We need to become more humble. We need to become more humility. We need to practice that. We need to wear the humility. Show to the world that we are the children of God. Not hypocritically acting. All this acting will change. All the drama will change after the drama is finished. All things that you preach or do things on the stage or talk when people are there. What is that is happening with you when you are alone? How you are able to justify yourself when you are alone? You need to evaluate that. When you are alone, whatever the thoughts that is coming, whatever the way that you are behaving, that really shows who you are. God wants these things to be changed. God wants these things to be changed. That's what when Apostle Paul, when he was writing to Corinthians, he said that, who am I? Who am I? I did not die for you. 
I did not do anything for you. Why you, you are so much differentiating? You need to understand. We need to focus on Jesus. Our thoughts, our mindset need to be tuned. We need to become the pre-image of God. When people look at us, they need to see Jesus in us. They need to see Jesus in us. My dear friends, Jesus is talking to you at this time. Let us be transformed. Inner, inward, you know, innerly. We need to change, not outward appearance. Not outwardly changing. God wants you to change deep inside your heart. God wants to see a transformation happening in you. Not just the outside. It is really tough. It's really tough. As a man of God, I'm telling you, it's really tough to be very open and frank. I can preach hundreds of sermons on the platform, but what am I practicing? What am I doing? I need to evaluate myself. I, I'll be scared if I preach something which I'm not following. I'll be scared. My dear friends, let us transform the world through us. Let's not expect somebody to change. Let's be the change. Let's be the change to the world. Jesus has demonstrated the love. He showed the demonstration. That's what when he said in uh, about husband and wife, he said, love your wife as Christ loved the church. Love your wife. He doesn't say that love like somebody else. He says that love your wife as Christ loved for your church. My church. The whole universe. Universal church. The way he loved the church. He says that the way he, he demonstrated his love by humiliation, by humbling, by crucifixion, how he died and resurrected. That's how we need to show the love for your husband. That's how you need to demonstrate to your wife. We need to love one another. Husband and wives need to love one another. When there are problems, you develop bitterness, anger, emotionally wounded. You don't open your mouth. Suddenly one day you open the mouth like a Pepsi bottle. When you shake a Pepsi bottle, suddenly you open, buzz, it opens up. On that day you become like, like furious. You speak all kind of words. And suddenly the husband is scared. All these days you are like angel. Suddenly you open up everything which he, did, he doesn't even understand. You build up everything in your heart. And suddenly one day you come up and say that you are like this, you are like that. And that's scary. When you have a problem, fix everything before, it's sun, before the sun is set. Don't, don't postpone your problems till the next day morning. That's what the Bible says. Fix your problem before the sunset so that you'll sleep in peace. You'll let your bed, your married bed should have peace. When you sleep next to your husband, when you sleep next to your wife, you need to have that peace, that love, that unconditional love need to be developed. My dear friends, the Bible is talking to you. The Bible is speaking to every one of us. The word of God is very powerful. Let's love one another. Husband, love your wife. Wife, love your husband. Children, love your parents. Parents, love your children. Love your enemies. Love your neighbors. Love your church. Love everybody. Love everybody because God is love. Let's demonstrate that love. Even though we live in India, whatever we earn, what we are doing now is that we take that money, buying provision, distributing the relief work during this coronavirus, this COVID-19. There is a big crisis in India. We see people starving. People are hungry. Families with kids, they are starving. Widows are suffering. Pastors are suffering because they are full-time pastors. They don't have church. They can't visit the believers because believers doesn't want the pastor to come into the church, into the house because of the virus spread. And now what is happening? The pastor doesn't have any income. You know, we are trying a maximum to show the love of God. It's not just praying. Prayer, everybody can do. 
but what extraordinarily that we can do what extraordinarily love that we can show to the world is demonstrating Christ's love to one another Jesus said when a person ask you something give him give him when a person says please i'm afraid i'm i want you to walk with me for 1 km go for 2 km that's how the love of christ is let's demonstrate let's become a change let's see ourselves as a mirror for the next generation let's pray at this time i would like to pray at this time i want you to also sincerely pray let's have a heart of christ let's change let us change and make others to follow the same let's become the true disciples of jesus father god thank you for this word as your people are watching this word lord i believe that their life will be transformed that's the deep inside their soul roots of their heart shall be changed through your word lord let them love one another let there be love among the family let there be love among the enemies let them love their enemies let them love the neighbors let the husband and love husband and wife love one another lord let your peace shall be transformed in everybody's heart i pray special blessings upon everybody in jesus mighty name i pray amen 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 thank you for taking time to watch this sermon and i believe that today is a blessed day let's change and let's become a door for others to change especially i want you to pray for india as covid-19 has the virus has been spreading very rapidly and i want you to especially pray for the poor families with kids pastors and widows who are really in need suicidal rates are increasing day by day because they are not able to provide the food for the family i see so many news that the whole family they are suiciding because the parents are not able to feed their children millions of people have lost their jobs there is tears and pain loneliness and during this lockdown i request you all to specially pray for india specially pray for india and i request you to specially so your special seed your seeds in the land of india during this crisis where we are providing relief pro- packets to the families and pastors and widows i request you to come forward to support this work thank you very much for standing with us god bless you